says find the coordinates of the points of inflection. Okay. Now again, I'm actually not going to focus on this too much in terms of the writing of the working. You guys can, it's actually quite lengthy. But what I want to remind you of is how to search for a point of inflection. What's the main thing you're looking for? What's a point of inflection? What is the definition of a point of inflection anyway? The, yeah, the point of inflection, a point of inflection, means a change in concavity. You went from concave up to concave down, or the other way around. Okay? So what's the easiest way to search for such changes in concavity? You're going to use this guy, right? Now, just watch out. It's been a while since we focused on this. I know you guys know to look for when this is zero, right? But it's not the only time when you can get a point of inflection. There's something else this can become that may be a point of inflection. Does anyone remember what it is? I've got a big clue on the board, okay? Um, this may be zero or um, no value. Like there might be a discontinuity in the second derivative. And this is the classic example. My class has seen this to death, but maybe if you came from another class, you haven't seen it before. This guy's the cube root of x, okay? So if you're looking at the cube root of x, chuck it in Desmos if you'd like to convince yourself there is a point of inflection. It goes from up to down in concavity. But when you try out the derivatives, right? There's y dash, there's y double dash, okay? You quickly realize that that second, sorry, that point of inflection, zero, you can't put it in here. Why not? What happens when you put zero into this? Um, see that minus sign on that index? That means that the way you could write this is minus 2 over 9 x to the 5 thirds. There's an x on the bottom. You put 0 into that and it just explodes in your face, right? But there's a point of inflection, okay? So we're looking for zeros or discontinuities. Are there any discontinuities on this? Have a look. Have a look. It's a, it's a quotient. It's a rational function. What kinds of things would give you a discontinuity for something like this? They, they tend to come from the denominator, right? Dividing by zero, just like we looked at. But see this denominator? It's never, ever zero. No matter what value of x that you put in if you've got real numbers, you won't get zero. Okay? So that's good. I don't have to worry about that. But there are two spots when it's zero. What are they? You can see it from here, can't you? Have a look. Oh, where's my blue gone? You're going to get your points of inflection. Uh, that's fine. At x equals what and what? 1 and negative 1, because that's a difference of squares in there. Yeah. When you get negative 1 and 1, what y values do you get for them? Have you found them already? Has anyone got them? We're going back to this original function, right? So you put 1 and negative 1 in here. I think you're going to get, you're going to get log 2, right? Is that right? Have I done that in my head? Okay. Now, just a quick note, I've got the same thing for both. That's suspicious. I should have, I didn't get asked a question about this, but I should have been a little bit clued into the fact that, see how there's a 1 plus x squared? See how that's an even power? So what kind of function, what kind of symmetry is this going to have? It's going to have even symmetry. It looks the same on both sides. Okay, now I'm ready to sketch the curve. I've got a stationary point. If you haven't already, get your... Um, set of axes and pop your stationary point on there. Now at that point, because it's a minimum, which you guys found earlier, I know it's going to be concave up, right? So I'm going to have something facing uh, upward at this point. And I also know that there are two points of inflection uh, here, one log two, so let's call that one. Let's go log two up here. So there's a point of inflection there. And because you guys have actually gone and you've tested, you did your neighborhood test, right? You've got the table of values there. You know it goes from concave up to concave down. On this side, it must be concave down, right? You're getting the same thing but in reverse over here because this is negative 1 log 2. It's going to go from concave down to concave up, yeah? What's the picture look like? Here's my minimum, right? I've got to get up to there like that. It's messy, but forgive me. And then I'm going to change concavity. So it sort of changes like that. Okay. Now, over here, how do I know, how do you know that it never comes back? It never loops back down. I could have gone for x-intercepts. However, at this point, I've not actually worked to find any. Now, 
it, as it happens, this graph doesn't ever come below zero, but I, don't, I haven't done anything to establish that yet. If it were to come back around and turn around, what would I have found earlier? In order to turn around, you'd have to be stationary, would you not? But I've, I've only got one stationary point. So this never comes back down. It just kind of slows down forever like that. Okay? Can't turn because I would have found something that would have told me that. Uh, it's an even function. Yeah? So therefore, once you've got the right-hand side, I know what the left-hand side is going to look like. There you go. Okay? This is the second to last part. This guy is y equals log of 1 plus x squared. Weird object. Very strange. But um, that's what calculus is for. Before calculus, you'd be like, I have no idea. Thank God for Desmos, right? Okay, well, we don't need to do that anymore. We've got answers. Last part. Sketch that guy. Now, have a look. Think back to what we've been doing recently. Mm, I've got space here. It says hence. It says hence. So everything I just did is going to be designed to help me get this. Okay? What can I do with this to help me see its relationship to this? Can someone tell me? What law can you take advantage of? We've already used it like a couple of times today. Yeah, I can separate this quotient, this log, into two logs. Right? So it's going to be this, ooh, that looks familiar, right? Take away log 2, okay? So that's not a coincidence, is it, right? See how these guys are up at log 2? You're going to drag them down, so where are they going to hit? Exactly on the axis, right? What about this guy? It used to be 0, 0. Well, you're going to drag it down log 2, so it'll be down on my scale. I guess it'll be there, negative log 2. Is that okay? So now I just take the rest of the shape and hey presto. Okay? So that was a lot of work. Yes, because it's a complicated graph and you've got to do a lot of machinery to get there. But that's part of why, for instance, you can see it says show that. They really want you to get this shape, right? So if you were to differentiate and they're like, oh no, I found the wrong derivative, you're kind of stuck. So that's why they give it to you, okay? Um, you guys know if you see a question like this, even if you can't get those derivatives, the question hands it to you. So you could say in part C, for instance, uh, I've run out of time to do part B, but you told me that this is true. So I can use it for part C and so on and so on, okay?